Islamic law has infiltrated your community, your country, and your life. Hi, everybody. I just went to a briefing in Washington, D.C., across the street from the Capitol at the Long Wharf Building at 8.30 a.m. two days ago, and it changed my life. Uh, for six hours, I saw pictures and names and dates and facts and Islamic law books and Quran surahs for six hours. And they proved to me, this guy John and Steve and their Team B too, ex-FBI, they proved to me that uh, the Muslim Brotherhood has infiltrated our highest positions in government. And uh, this is serious. This is their book. Um, if you care at all about freedom, then you have to be educated and fight back. Uh, Hillary Clinton just said that Islamophobia should be punishable by law. I thought that the media is the one who took the words Islam, uh, Sharia, and all the um, Muslim out of the uh, newspapers and the TV show. No. The Muslim Brotherhood, who has a lot of front groups and organizations, and who actually has, um, they took it out of the conversation. If you can't identify your enemy, how can you fight your enemy? Islam is our enemy. Islam is not a religion of peace. That's a lie. It's called taqiyya. You're allowed to lie for Allah. And one more thing. The FBI assistant director, the FBI, for Weapons of Mass Destruction Directorate is an Iranian-born Muslim, our FBI assistant director, and the Muslim Public Affairs Council, MPAC, trains the TSA. Remember 9-11? Remember the airports were supposed to be secure? Okay, it, there's six more hours of facts, and I'm very upset about it. You know the mainstream media doesn't, they just did a fluff piece on Islam on 60 Minutes. Mm -hmm joke. You're liars. The lie of omission. You are not telling the American public the truth. And uh, absolutely. Uh, she interviewed Frank Gaffney. Tell, tell me yeah. about that interview. He's right here. He's one of the co-writers of, of this book, of Sharia in America, The Threat to America. Sharia is here. It's already in America. If you think it can happen in our country, it's already here. There's case after case after case of Sharia compliance in America. It's called civilization jihad. There's three kinds of jihad. One is violent, uh, head cutting, stabbing, shooting. And one is civilization jihad where they creep into a society and they're using us against ourselves. Uh, in 2005, when we established a helped Iraq and Afghanistan get a constitution, they put a clause in there that says they will be run under Islamic law. Hello, we lost. We lost. The Muslim Brotherhood is controlling all of the Middle East, um, except Israel. Except, except Israel. Israel for now. And they are now in all of our highest positions, including the president. I said to this guy at the FBI guy, "Do you think Obama is a Muslim?" And he goes, "Well, the facts are that all of his policies side with the Muslims and are against Israel. That's just the fact." And according to religionofpeace.com, 18,070 people have been killed worldwide from Islamic terrorists since 9-11. That's not for the whole world. I mean, that's, that's not for the history of Islam. That's just since 9-11, 2001. Mm -hmm. 18,070. That number climbs every day. Go to religionofpeace.com and you can see every single day something is happening throughout mm -hmm. the world. They list day by day, week by week, month by year by year. And Muslims are responsible. Thank you, Jan Morgan. She's one of my great friends. She's been keeping, this is like Islam is her, is her mission. She wants to educate, we Pam all need to educate And Pamela them. Geller. Pamela Geller. Um, Muslims are responsible for 270 million people in the 1400 year history of Islam being murdered and slaughtered. Um, the Quran has over a hundred verses commanding murder, assault, and terror against all people who will not submit or convert. You this have isn't to convert. made up. <laughs> yeah, you have to convert or be killed. That's it. Um, there's no gray area. Now, people say, but there's peace in the Quran. The beginning of the Quran is peace. The second half is war uh, and violent. It's called aggregation. 
it, when this thing that Mohammed made up, or one of the guys who wrote the Islamic law books, that, that put implement the Quran, and it says that the verses at the end of the Quran are more important than the ones at the beginning, and that's the ones you have to obey. The last verse, the surah in the Quran says, kill the infidel. Well, I actually have um, a question for you regarding one of the things that you said earlier um, regarding the Islamophobia. Now, that is a term that you really don't hear. It sounds like they're really trying to coin that term. What is the overall agenda behind not only calling people Islamophobes, but what do you feel, feel is the ultimate agenda behind that? Well, the socialists, the progressives like Hillary, want to destroy America. Agenda 21 and the UN want to bring us down to third world countries so we're all even. The, uh, George Soros wants a one world government. Islam wants a one world government. So they have that in common. Hillary Clinton's assistant is Mrs. Weiner, who is the Weiner scandal. You know, the guy who showed his Weiner. His name was Weiner. It's so great. I can't right. make this stuff up. <laughs> and his wife, Mrs. Weiner, is the daughter of the woman who created the Muslim Sisterhood. So interesting that the top, you know, what is Secretary of State Hillary Clinton? Is that what her She's title? She's the Secretary of State. Yeah. Okay, so her assistant knows all the secrets she knows, and she's Islam. Mm -hmm. um, Islamophobia, what's their purpose in, in saying mm -hmm. that? Well, like the strategy behind that is what exactly. The strategy is uh, if you take the, the words out, if you can't define the enemy, like if you say the guy at the Fort Hood shooting was a shooter, and he yelled. He was American born. He yelled something. <laughs> no matter where he's born. It started with an A, I don't know. Uh, uh, wasn't Allah Akbar. Yeah. You know, he, he wasn't. It, it's like uh, our enemy is within. Well, the enemy is with their. They, if you take a. If you don't. Can't define your, your enemy, how can you. I'm curious if this is going to go the way. Because I hadn't heard about this Islamophobia being pushed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I'm curious if this is going to go the same way as homophobia, where are they wanting to eventually have it be a hate crime to yes. say anything that yeah, is yeah. perceived as anti Oh, we're going to be in trouble Muslim. now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're is... going to get in trouble for this. <laughs> yeah. and, and here's like the thing. Why should I be afraid? Okay. If Hillary Clinton is saying that, that it's punishable by, by law to, to say anything against Islam, that's not American law. First Amendment says I have the freedom to sing a song against Islam and not be murdered. That's American law. If Hillary is saying that Islamophobia should be punishable by law, she's talking about Islamic law. What about everyone Why condemning she, Christians and burning Bibles? If we're that under Islamic the law, then my husband can cut my head off and stone Absolutely. me to death. Okay. I wait. I have a, a, another really quick question. Do you believe that most of our Congress people know about? I'll tell you something. Congress mm -hmm. could care less. Why do you say that? Because 38 people were invited to the six-hour briefing, and there was 15. And I only noticed two from Congress. And we know there's 435 representatives. Yeah, that's how senators. concerned they are, okay? They're concerned about their suit, shaking hands, getting money the rest of their lives and free planes or whatever. Oh, by the way, Saudi Arabia is taking Congress people on free trips to Arabia to show them how moderate Sweet. they are. This is true. Mm. They're going on jets and having fun vacations with the Saudis. Now, this thing is very well funded because of the oil, because we gave them lots of money. Um, what I, I got to say this one thing too. Former senior U.S. intelligence officer David Galbetz said there are 400 to 500 radical Islamic centers in the U.S. They espouse violence, hatred, and the need for terrorism more. in our country. And the moderate Muslims, there's, there's no such thing because if you don't support the jihad, you can be killed by another Muslim. They're supposed to give that tithe thing, and one seventh goes to all mm -hmm. jihad, you know, murder. So they're all supporting it. But I just here's the most frightening zakat. thing. Yeah, zakat. Yeah, zakat. That's the tithe. Yeah. Um, you got to get uh, educated people here. Um, now this was this week in the airport. I'm like, oh, a cross. You know, I love Jesus. And it's basically <laughs> saying that extreme Muslim terrorists, extremists, are exactly the same as extreme right-winger Christian conservatives. That is so ridiculous. They show, a, and the Tea Party, we're extremists. 
they show a picture of these two guys and say that these are right-wing extremists. This is propaganda lies because we have facts to prove. Tell them. Tell them, Anne-Marie. Well, Tim McVeigh was Oklahoma. the one that they always say we have white terrorists. Oklahoma we have Timothy bombing, McVeigh. Timothy Oklahoma McVeigh. bombing. Um, Jane, Jana Davis from K, KFOR, and she, um, she wrote a book called The Third Terrorist, The Middle East Connection to the Oklahoma City Bombing. Um, there was allegedly another bomber attached with Timothy. He was, he was, he was associated Muslim. with Islam. He was a Muslim. Muslam terrorist who helped McVeigh. They have proof, they have facts, they saw him in a bar together, etc. Yeah. He was working with the Muslims. He wasn't a right-wing extremist. And this guy... Uh, the one who just shot Gabriel, yeah, yeah. He, they said he's a Christian. No, he had the Communist Manifesto listed as his favorite book on Facebook. Not a Christian Baptist right winger. So this is a lie. Okay, you guys are lying to the American public. And I'll tell you something: you can't defeat your enemy if you're closing your eyes, shutting your ears, and they're taking away our freedom. And if you want to live under Islamic law. Get your head cut off. Have Muslim men marry your six-year-old daughter. Then fine. Do nothing, okay?